In the last couple of vlogs, I've looked at the physicality of the meeting table, and I thought it might be interesting to take a look at how this plays out in some real meetings. And I'm going to do so by using this photo that I used in an earlier blog. And I should say at the beginning that I know nothing about the people or the context. It's just a photo I found online. But worth examining, I think, because it demonstrates some of the things I've been talking about. Number one, let me ask you, who is chairing this meeting? I would say it's this lady. She's in the middle of the longest side. She's got empty seats on either side of her, which gives her more space. She's leaning in, and the moment she lifts her eyes from that paper, she's going to be able to command the room. This lady also has quite high status. Again, she's got empty chairs on either side of her, which gives her more space. She's leaning in. She's in a great position to contribute to the meeting. This lady's in a reasonably good position, again, the middle of the longest side, but she's a little bit hemmed in by those people on either side of her. However, she's clearly got more influence. This lady has removed herself from the meeting by sitting so far back and putting her hands in her lap. And I'm particularly curious about these two people down at the front. They're both in the rubbish corner seats, but this lady is clearly making more of an effort to get herself into the meeting whereas this guy looks a little bit like a spectator. I find myself wondering why neither of them simply pulled a chair around here to sit in the middle of this side, which would have immediately given them greater status and greater influence. Or possibly got rid of the chair they're sitting on entirely and moved this empty chair to give themselves a little bit more space. This picture is also quite revealing. It was taken the day after David Cameron won an unexpectedly large majority at the 2015 election. So his position that day was unassailable. The result? More space. Nobody wants to sit shoulder to shoulder with the Alpha. Similar thing going on with the British War Cabinet from 1939. This is Neville Chamberlain, the Prime Minister. Again, more space around him. And interestingly, Winston Churchill, another real heavyweight, who obviously was to become Prime Minister next, again, has a little bit more space around him, but not as much as Chamberlain. Worth looking also at how it plays out at meetings without tables, where you're free pretty much to put your chair where you choose. Usually, people sit in something approximating a circle, but it's very clear here who the dominant guy at the meeting is. It's this guy. He's got more space around him. These two are also probably contributing well. They're both leaning in. They've got themselves some influence. This lady, however, has pretty much absented herself from the meeting by just pulling her chair fractionally out of the circle, as has this lady. And these two people are entirely removed. OK, they're not in the picture, but they're outside the circle, which essentially goes like this. This guy is not in a bad position, he's got some space around him, but by leaning back, hands in his lap, he weakens himself, as does this lady. This guy is making the mistake of hiding behind his laptop, which diminishes him, whereas this lady, again, more space, has more influence. Another option worth considering at meetings is standing up. It's certainly if you're giving anything like a formal presentation. This guy could sit down, but by standing up, he elevates himself, he takes the floor and commands the room, and people will automatically listen to him. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but I'm saying it's an option. And lastly, I really like this picture of Obama. Clearly the alpha, more space around him, leaning in, hands on the table, whereas almost all the others have their hands in their laps, or at best one hand on the table, and then, of course, there's the row of spectators behind. So all of these things are really illustrations of how people's physicality both reflects but also influences their status. Next time you go to a meeting, have a look around the room, see who's doing what, and just become more aware of your own physicality and try to find ways in which you can increase your own status and therefore your own influence through how you behave physically.